Hi, everyone. Welcome to Blue Hope on Commonwealth Day. And uh, welcome, everyone, once again to this session uh, that actually um, is the launch of the Sabah Plastic Neutral. Here with, um, I like to, I'm here to actually to introduce the moderator of this session, and she's none other, and, uh, none other than Amy Dangin from KK12 FM radio announcer and also a social media influencer. Here with, uh, I'd like to pass over the panel over to you, Amy. Here you go. Thank you once again, Nora. Good evening, dwellers of Earth and custodians of our environment. Once again, I'm Amy Dangin and I'll be your moderator. It's so good to see so many familiar faces. Um, good to see fellow adult human beings, if you know what I mean. <laughs> times, pandemic times have forced us to change a lot of things. Um, and uh, it's an honor also to have um, in the audience with us, uh, Paul Rose. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, great moderation on the previous sessions. And in this one, we are going to do something big. You know, if this is not the pandemic times, of course, you would be in an actual physical um, event, giving this thing a bigger and more deserving launch. But here we are with the only options that we're left with, launching it virtually. But what matters most is what we all feel about what we are about to launch, this thing that we are going to launch, the Saba Plastic uh, Neutral. And uh, we have our special guest of honor. Once again, uh, welcome and thank you to uh, Datuk Masidi Manjun, Minister of Local Government and Housing, Sabah. Uh, it's such an honor. We know that your schedule has been very busy. And we also have uh, representing our mayor from uh, Kota Kinabalu City Hall, Deputy Director General, uh, Lifred Wong. And we also have the Deputy High Commission, Commissioner of the British High Commission KL, David Thomas. Hello, David, thank you for joining us. And we are going to hear from all of these important people, right, about uh, what we are doing here today, gathering here. Um, and once, also thank uh, our audience, our viewers, thank you for your support in whatever way they may be. And uh, yeah, kita dengar dulu lah. Uh, sedikit uh, speech, a little bit of speech, a word or two. Um, may I first invite uh, Lif Mr. Lifred Wong to, yeah, to share with us uh, DBKK or uh, Kota Kinabalu City Halls. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Operator. Uh, it's a privilege to be here with all of you. Uh, to the viewer, especially to Dato, good evening. And uh, to our uh, viewer on the other part of the world, it's good morning, especially those in the UK. Uh, Madam uh, Noliza Wangalip, Kota uh, Kinapalu City Hall Mayor, uh, send her apologies. She cannot make it uh, this evening uh, due to other urgent issues that she needs to deal with in the office. Uh, on behalf of uh, the mayor and uh, Kota Kinabalu City Hall, we at City Hall uh, are very happy and excited to be part of uh, Kota Kinabalu uh, plastic project, a neutral plastic project. While it will start uh, in Kota Kinabalu, thereafter it is planned that uh, it will cover the entire state of Sabah. Uh, this project is uh, very significant. It will be the reference point and the beginning of a massive effort and initiative to clean the sea, the island, the river, and the mainland. It will involve everyone, the community, the media, the NGOs, and the government. This project will certainly contribute immersely in turning Kota Kinabalu and Sabah into clean, green, and a blue state. Let us together be enthusiastic on this initiative and create the positive momentum as we march forward. Thank you. Thank you, Lifred. And yeah, encouraging positive words there from our mayor. And it's true, everybody, every single person needs to be enthusiastic about our mission to make Sabah plastic neutral. Um, can we hear next from um, Datuk Masidi, 
maybe I, I believe that you might need to cut your visit short, but yeah, spend whatever time with us, sharing with us what's your thought on this. <clears throat> Thank you, Amy. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Hi. Yeah, you have a new look, Amy. And then I don't normally see you in this uh, rather, I would say, normal look. Normal. <laughs> normally uh, I would have my headscarf yeah. on. <laughs> I suppose today is International Women's Day, so you would like to look like one, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Celebrating right. my womanhood. Yeah. yeah, it's an honor again to be invited to a very important uh, discussion. I wish I had more time, but uh, nevertheless, I just want to say what I want, uh, what I really want to say. I mean, so much has been, this, so much has been said in this class about Sabah. The fact that we are one of the few, I think, places in the world that is practically we have everything. We have the forest, the sea, the beauties, the beauties of nature are all in Sabah. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, the beauties do not necessarily uh, what we call extend to human behavior. And that is basically our problem, actually. You see, you see look at the plastic around Kota Kinabalu, even in Sabah. I think I must say, being a former tourism minister and a former environment minister, I'm some, sometimes embarrassed to say, to, 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 to admit that we have, we have not done too well in that uh, direction. I wish, we, I wish we could have done better. The, it's all boils to two things, in my opinion. One is, of course, attitude, yeah? our own attitude. And of course, the other one is, again, perhaps it may not be something that is politically correct if I say, sometimes we lack the political courage to make a, the right decisions. And this is what I would like to emphasize. The, unfortunately, in this world, what is right and what is popular are two different things. Right is right, but something that is popular may not necessarily be right. I think we need to make a decision that is more of what is right rather than merely popular. And this is where I would go to the next one. Political courage is important. And unfortunately, political courage is something that is sometimes, in fact, many times are not popular because you make a decision which will take the political interest or even the behavior of human beings. And you know, politician done, politicians normally don't like to be unpopular by uh, making rules that is going to limit or even uh, restrict human behavior or misbehavior, if I may use the word. Now, I think we have reached a point in our life, knowing the severity of the problem, so we need to make unpopular decisions. And unpopular decisions need to be taken up by politicians and all decision makers. I give you, for example, yeah, Kota Kinabalu. Uh, I'm sorry if I offend the uh, city city hall, but you see, what are the, who are the biggest contributors to the uh, uh, rubbish in Kota Kinabalu? I mean, uh, you can uh, disagree with me later. Whenever this question is raised, everybody's finger points to Gaia Island, where most or nearly all the immigrants stay. But people, who, people forget that uh, when the study was done many years ago about who are the contributors of the rubbish in the Kinabalu by the BKK itself, yeah? The study shows that 70% of all our rubbish are thrown by, from a moving vehicles. I don't think the immigrants have drive car in this part of the world. Yeah. So we must be the culprits. Two, you look at the rivers. There are five rivers that flow to Kota Kinabalu. I did not elaborate what the rivers. I can only name some. Darao, Inanam, Likas, Putatan, Sembulan rivers. Yeah. Now look at the, uh, you go along these rivers. What is supposed to be a riparian reserve, and you know, under the law, riparian reserve are not to be used as a place to put up dwellings. You cannot, under the law, put up a structure within the riparian reserve. Riparian reserve is about 66 feet on either, either side of the uh, river. But look what's happening now. 
we have, I would say, uh, what I call this, uh, what is this? We have uh, villages being constructed along the repair and reserve, mm -hmm. and most of them are squatters. So being squatters, they are not entitled to facilities from the city hall. They won't collect the rubbish. They don't provi provide the rubbish bins. So where did they throw the rubbish? Of course, the river. The river act as their mobile rubbish bins. So the, ru the rubbish goes into the sea, into the river, throw it into the sea, and during the high tide, the oceans, the, 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 the oceans in front of Kota Kinabalu, the beautiful oceans, beautiful sea, send back the rubbish to our shore. I think there are a few of you who are of the same age with me. I think I'm, you must be familiar with Elvis, one of Elvis' songs, Return to Sender. Yeah. That's exactly what the sea is doing to us in Kota Kinabalu. They are, they are returning, the sea is returning back all the rubbish that we have thrown along the rivers and have gone into the sea. And what would be the net effect? The, our, not only our rivers are polluted, even our seas are polluted. And the only way to, that, to do that, to solve the problem, is not to pick the rubbish every day. We can spend millions hiring people, hiring companies to pick up rubbish, but you will never solve the problem. Go to the source of the problem. We are the source of the problem. The squatters village along the rivers that flow to Kita Kinabalu. One. And what, that's, what, that's what it means. What does it mean? It means you have to make a difficult but the right decision to ask these people to move from that place. And that is easier said than done. Why? Typically, after a squatter's village has been built, flags of political parties will start, will start being hosted to inform the authorities, say, don't disturb us. We are, we, otherwise there will be political repercussions. Isn't it? So you only did increase even, even bigger. So you are actually not solving the problems. You allow the problem to persist simply because you don't want to disturb in inverted comma, politicians. So that is actually the, our problem. You need to have political courage in order, in order to make a decision which will, to certain extent, infuriate politicians, but will solve our problems. Trust me. I don't know. I mean, this is something that I think nobody wants to hear, especially among politicians. But this is what you got to hear. Until and unless we have the political courage to do what is right, in 20 or 30 years' time, we'll still be discussing in this forum the same problems over and over again. And I like to end my comments at this juncture by saying, I just want to remind you the definition of insanity. When I was being low, I was always reminded by my professor to, about the, this particular definition of it, insanity. He says, insanity is doing the same thing all over and over again and expecting different results. You cannot get different results if you keep on doing the same thing that you have been doing all along. You need to change what you want to do. And this for, for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to state my total support to Blue Hope of Kota Kinabalu. In this, I would say it may sound little or small, but it could actually act as what do you call this? Something I mean, that could actually ignite the uh, enthusiasm of the people of Kota Kinabalu to go along with this initiative. And I can only say, I hope the BKK will make a right decision. Don't worry about politicians. You leave to us to to to, to so you, you leave it to us to handle politicians. But for now, you do what is right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Dato. Thank, Thank you, you Dato. You've always yeah. been one. Yeah, you've always been an admirer. You have been our idol. You are. We, we want to hear that word, you know? Not every political, not every person, not every leader can speak like you. 
I'm not I'm not buttering your shoe. Yeah. <laughs> and and but, and to yeah. balance it out and to balance yes. it out and since we're here I'm just going to take this opportunity to maybe uh nanti kita copy copy that to a few rec- a few recommendations on how you can you can use your current capacity as um, local council and housing minister I mean to 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 make our work to protect our environment to have more awareness for environment better nanti ya belakang cerita tidak ada tidak cukup kalau kau boleh lebih saja macam so thank you like uh, yeah like that to say we need to do something different so this is the different the Sabah plastic neutral in blue hope platform international global platform this is something that different we are going all out uh, together with all our international partner and working closely with the BKK yeah thank you that for your for your support and your blessing yeah, Thank you. So, future yeah, I think, collaborations. Yeah. Before, be, by the way, after this, my officer who, who will be handling what you call this uh, rubbish and in Rotten Tomato yeah. Real uh, will be taking over from me and he will give you his expert advice and opinions because he's been handling rubbish all the while. No, I mean, not physically, of course, but uh, he's in charge of all the rubbish problems in the whole state. His name all right. Is, Thank his you name so much, is, uh, Uh, Jody, yeah, Jody Samson. So Jody. we'll take over shortly. Okay, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Dr. thank you so much, Dato. Um, thank I'll, you. I'll be here for a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. okay. Um, I think Amy, I, uh, Paul, I think we should uh, introduce uh, ourselves uh, so that Dato know uh, who are we, uh, our name, where we're from, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Do Simon, that. over to you. Um. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tatu, for those kind words. It's great to have you um, here with us for the launch. Um, I'm Simon Christopher. I've been here since 1995. Um, I fell in love with Sabah then, and I haven't left. And this is really just a continuation of that story. Sab- this Sabah Plastic Neutral is all about change, and it's about value. The value of Sabah um, is, um, it, it, it's, it's, It eclipses everything else, and that is why I've been storytelling here, 200 hours of TV. We've had Sir David here a few times. The last big shoot he ever did in Asia was here in Sabah. Why? Because there were more stories to tell here than anywhere else in Asia. That's the bottom line. And he has, uh, we have his full support. We are, talk, we are filming him again next week, congratulating uh, Sabah people and government for their leadership. And this is a global platform, and the world will follow. Uh, Sabah is the early adopter, but it has to be Sabah because there's more to save here than anywhere else. So it's all about value and it's connecting people. It's all about people connecting people with their biodiversity. Um, so I'd just like to say um, thank you, obviously, for the support. It's been great getting to know you, uh, Lifred, and obviously thank you so much to Juan Mayor, Juan Nolisa. I think it's important to say that today is International Women's Day. And even though she's not here, she should be here. I'm so sorry, Juan, but, uh, but we've got some wonderful uh, uh, ocean and green, green, blue queens here of the environment. And we'll be hearing from them. And it's a very important beat that today is International Women's Day. She's the first mayor for Sabah, female mayor. And we need to have big respect, big congratulations to Juan, to Juan uh, Nolisa. Um, it's a big, 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 big movement. And so I'm sorry that she's not here, but thank you for the, for the support and the belief and the faith. It's taken a while. Lifred, looking forward to rolling up our sleeves and getting this going with your team. Um, and there are a few other key people I need to mention. Um, we have some key partners who, who are inter- integrally involved, intricately involved, BWI, um, or, uh, Kayu Madang, you know, if you're going to deal with the, the waste, you have to deal with the guys that end up with the waste. And so uh, Raven and his team, uh, BWI, obviously they already have the relationship with DBKK, but, but, uh, but we we're really looking forward to working with them to maximize the value and aggregate waste so that it, it, uh, it stops going out into Sabah's environment and maximize the value for all Sabah hands. Um, And then we have new partners we're bringing in from international partners. We have new partners called VAL, Norwegian Technology. They are going to be the solution out on places like Pulagaya. 
So this is for Pulau Gaya as well. This is for Hanafia, for the villagers, 12,000 people there. That will be our first location. That will be our pilot. That will be our showcase. We still have whales. We, uh, sorry, we still have sharks and turtles and, and um, proboscis monkeys and, 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 uh, and hornbills. 10 minutes from KK, 10 minutes from Hong Kong Bank. And that is why KK is so special because no other si capital city on the planet has that biodiversity. So that's where it's going to start. Um, so really looking forward to it. And um, great to have everyone here on the panel because they're, we're going to hear about what Sabah Plastic Neutral could be in the future. And every single person who's on this panel uh, are doing incredible work. They're heroes in their own right so at different levels. So we'll be hearing from them. And that's the future. That we're, we're planning to, to make Sabah Plastic Neutral in five years. It's a big challenge, but we can do it. And, uh, and it's a collective effort and involves everyone. So it's very exciting. So thank you very much. From, from me and thank you for, for Monica for you being here and uh, being our, our kind of our, our reality check, our community director, my co-founder for Sabah, for, for Blue Hope Sabah. Over to you, Monica. Let's have, just hear from you quickly before we go to someone else. Uh, I think I just uh, simply introduced myself. I'm the co-founder of Blue Hope and uh, been cuba diving for 23 years around Sabah, trying to promote our uh, biodiversity under the under the water and as well as the land mm -hmm. and um, I've been doing about picking up the rubbish um, educating try to talk to community around Sabah since 2013 and yeah I found Blue Hope uh, so this is the right platform to uh, to uh, how to say to work with the international partner to bring all the uh, international collaboration to help us to do something different like um, our minister say, um, yeah, and working together um, uh, towards the change, not by doing the same thing, saying it's right. We need to do something, something different, but something is right for to sustain whatever is remaining now. So yeah, I think that's all from me. And this is a very important session for all of us. Mm. This will be make a big change. So. Yeah, over to you, uh, Amy. I think just we should say hear. one more one more thing. I did. We've we've got David who's sitting there very quietly. But yeah. um, David, okay, David, over to David, the British British High Commission, um, uh, Charles, the British High Commission. Um, I feel I felt your pain from the first time when uh, when YBO uh, when you had to take all the flat for the British plastic coming over to 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 Malaysia. Peninsula. It's a shared yeah. problem. It's a global problem. But you were the one that took that first pain and started this whole process. And the support that we've had from, from the British High Commission, obviously Charles, the vision to support us maybe when we, we, uh, we, we probably were doing or we're sticking our neck out. Really appreciate it. And obviously Alison, Alison Hollingridge has, has been the kind of the person waving flag. She, she, she needs big mention. She's another uh, incredible lady. So thank you, David. A, a personal thank you to yourself and your support with uh, with obviously Charles with the British High Commission. So we, I think we, might, we should hand over to you now, David, probably, just to uh, say your part now that Sabra is uh, officially going to Sabra Plastic Neutral. Thanks, Simon, and thank you, Minister and, and colleagues, and hello to everyone watching. Um, I just wanted to warmly welcome the launch of Sabra Plastic Neutral. Um, as Simon says, we've been working with Blue Hope uh, since its inception, really. And as you were saying at the start, living in the pandemic, it seems like we've had a, a world of webinars. Um, we've been doing World Oceans Day, World Children's Day uh, last year, and now um, International Women's Day and Commonwealth Day today, um, promoting messages around trying to stop plastic waste. And the UK has always been a very strong supporter of the environment. It's a very special year for us and the world. As you know, we've got the COP26 uh, tackling climate change, the World Conference on Climate Change in Glasgow in November. And I was saying at a, uh, a session earlier today that if plastic was a country, uh, it would be the world's fifth highest emitter. Mm. So uh, not only are you cleaning up your waters, protecting your biodiversity, but doing this uh, by launching uh, SABA Neutral, you are also playing your part in uh, stopping climate change. So uh, it's a, a massive shout out and thank you from the High Commission uh, and the UK government, and we wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Amy, back to you, I think. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, David. 
and thank you, Simon. Maybe you can now tell us what is Sabah plastic neutral? What's going to happen, right? And um, I believe today's discussion will be focusing a lot on innovating plastic, you know, re rethink and revisit our relationship with plastic. Mm. There's a lot, there's going to be a lot of attachment issues because we've had a long-term relationship with plastic. They've provided us enough convenience, but at the cost of our lifestyle and our long-term survival as a species, really. Um, so yeah, how, how is this, how is tech tackling plastic, plastic problems in Sabah? How are we going to do, to do it technically? Simon or Monica? Sure. Well, Mom, shall I start? Yeah, Simon, so, over to you. Um, I mean, the, 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 the reason I kind of got into this, um, having kind of left Scuba Zoo, I kind of got into the, the kind of the, the, the solution to plastic with a British company, and I kind of brought that to Asia and started those discussions. And so the exciting thing is that plastic now has value. You look at a bit of plastic, and it's basically oil wrapped up in a different, in a different uh, configuration. So and what's happened in the last few years is we can now unlock that. There are different mechanisms to do that on different scales. So the exciting thing is that we're starting a new plastic decade. So the 20 to 30 tons of plastic waste that arrives on, on Sabah's shores every single day um, on the incoming tide, that is value. That's the new Macan. So what we need to do is connect that to that value. And that's, that's that 20 to 30,000 kilos of plastic every single day, which up until now has been a problem. Is someone else a problem? Pointing the finger at the island, island is pointing the problem. But it's actually the opportunity. This is the opportunity. This is the future for Sabah to, to lead the charge. And the world will follow. And all the agricultural land is sitting there. The future environmental packaging, the rice paper, the tapioca, this is an opportunity for Sabah to actually uh, lead the charge. And so, I mean, it's, 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 it's everyone. It includes everyone uh, in Sabah. And that's really exciting. We're going to bring real tangible value from plastic and not just plastic always. Um, and I think it, it's, it's going to be, it's everyone. And the, 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 how's it going to work? Which well, everyone in this panel. And I think we should, it's time for me to talk on, to bring on a few other key people. But I think what's really important is, is as we start UNESCO Ocean Decade, um, this is the most important beat of all. We've got real wind in our sails because we're listening to ocean. We're listening to blue for the first time. And the words of the words of Silver Earl, her royal deepness, she says that you know tomorrow has to be a blue has to be tomorrow's green. And basically there is more the more oxygen comes from the ocean than than from from the land and the the, the, the trees. And so so the point is we need to listen to ocean, we need to celebrate, we need to protect ocean. And uh, so it's really a, a journey of discovery, academic research, study. And so SABA will become a sense of excellence. No, we're not going to have tourism coming for the next one or two years. Sorry, I think we've all realized that. But what we are going to do at the same time as cleaning up SABA, we're going to become the sense of excellence. We're going to be doing the studies. We're going to be doing the studies of the microplastic through the environment. And we've got more impact, more species. So it's the best place to do the study because we've got more biodiversity to interact with plastic. So we are the definitive lab experiment for plastic. It, is, it has to be Sabah, Sabah that does this. And it's the next five years. So that leads me to um, a distinguished pan panelist from UMS who will clearly will be one of the, the, the kind of the benchmarks or basically pivotal points. So we're going to bring in other universities, international universities, and over the next five years, we'll be studying plastic and we'll be seeing some frightening revelations about nanoplastic and microplastic because research always takes longer, particularly in the ocean, out of sight is out of mind. But, but what we, we have Dr. Gidon here from, from UMS, who in fact already has an amazing groundbreaking project working on plastics out on the islands. And so it's, I'm really looking forward to sitting down and carving up a plan and bringing in international partners and, and basically saying this is where it starts. We've got five, 10 years to really, and the, the baseline studies that we do here will be the baseline studies, the benchmark for the rest of the region. So with that said, um, over to you, uh, Dr. Jolon. It's great to have you here. And I'm looking forward to hearing your project. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Simon, for that wonderful introduction. So it's really my great pleasure to be here again. And especially I would like to again thank you, uh, the SP uh, Masidi. I think, you know, that message just now sent direct to Mr. Lifred and <laughs> I believe, you know, uh, Mr. Lifred has something already in mind now and especially uh, what Simon has mentioned about bringing, you know, that uh, center of excellence in, in the soil of Sabah. So, um, you yeah, know, we are really aware of that and really we look forward. So I actually have a, a few slides of presentation if this is the time. Yeah, so uh, this is basically a, um, a photo of Marble Island for your kind information. And we in UMS actually have this uh, team, uh, like what you have seen in the photo here, is basically uh, led by uh, our uh, own vice chancellor, uh, Professor Dato, uh, Dr. Uh, Taufik Yap. And uh, this is a very interesting project because uh, right from the start, we are already actually collaborating with uh, many parties. So we have a team from Spain uh, because they have, you know, a group of researchers who is very much interested in finding a renewal, renewable way to tackle plastic. And at the same time, we actually have a collaborator from the U.S. Uh, this is from the University of Kentucky uh, because uh, they have developed, uh, you know, one prototype basically to convert uh, plastic to fuel. And then uh, we, uh, in our own soil, we, we, we basically uh, do a little bit of uh, like efforts uh, how to convert all these plastic waste uh, to useful uh, products. So uh, why we choose Marble Island as our basically uh, a pilot? I, I would call this a pilot because, again, to give you the context, um, the awareness of converting uh, plastic, waste plastic to fuel is already there. In fact, some countries have success, succeeded to, um, you know, develop a big scale of these. But um, somehow uh, we in Sabah need to start this and we know that um, uh, we basically deal with people. Again, as uh, Datu uh, just now has mentioned, uh, this is again has something to do with political because uh, even though we know that is right, but it's not necessarily acceptable by the people. So this is basically uh, like our uh, um, a pilot, uh, which we hope that um, you know we can really understand the uh, people and we can really bring the uh, technology and accept it by them. So this presentation, basically, I, I, I want to just mention that this is not intended for very technical presentation, but just, um, you know, uh, sharing what is uh, the awareness here, what kind of idea we want to bring in and what kind of technology that we actually uh, try to promote and we, what kind of uh, value or profits that we intend to bring to the people. So next. Yeah, uh, just to give you some context of this uh, Marble Island, again, we know, I believe Miss Monica, especially, you know, we can record that this island is one of the most beautiful, uh, you know, island in the world. And uh, in fact, uh, one of our collaborators there is basically operating, uh, you know, uh, I believe, you know, scuba diving business. And um, this is a tiny island that big, sorry, about 20 uh, hectares. And uh, it's about uh, 2,500 uh, residents and uh, what currently these people are doing is they basically you know uh, ship yeah all the waste back to Samporna and uh, we know we are not bringing valuable and uh, you know this kind of uh, you know again uh, a problem because oftentimes the waste is dumped in the waste pile on the island and in the ocean so uh, currently uh, this scuba junkie works with the local community there and they really try to create awareness, but again, they really feel that in addition to just asking the people from stop throwing the garbage or collect the garbage, there must be a way to value add this whole process. So that's why this actually idea, you know, came to us and then we team up actually to do this project. Next, please. So the current situation on uh, Marble uh, Island with regards to plastic wet waste, um, the easiest one, <laughs> the, basically the people will burn it, bury it, and uh, again, the easiest one is just dump at sea. And uh, we believe this is a very 
typical everywhere, uh, which uh, when we actually devised the solution, we thought that this can also be replicated actually to other places. So next, please. Now, um, the challenges which we would like to uh, like, uh, you know, enlighten here, at first, uh, the people there, we have very limited income. And because of that, again, you know, it's remote area, it's in the island, there is no waste management there. So I believe, you know, despite, you know, being a famous island, uh, this island still face this type of problem. So, and again, we, we scale up the problem. Uh, I believe in the whole summer, we are facing the same issues too. Yeah, next please. So the, the whole objective of this project is basically, we really want to create situation where plastic waste has value to the community. Because we again believe, because you know, uh, the situation in Sabah, uh, we, the people still need to feed themselves. So whatever we want to bring to the people, we believe that if we can show the money, <laughs> you know, in their eyes, uh, that probably a workable solution. Yeah, so next please. So then what kind of solution we can bring? Uh, this is uh, very interesting. Again, uh, as I mentioned, this is not uh, no rocket science, basically a technology, but a design suitable for the local people that does the job. So what uh, our fellow in the US basically have developed with this is what we call as appropriate technology pyrolyzer. It's basically uh, you know, converting the right type of plastic and for this particular example, they usually uh, use uh, coconut husk as the fuel. And then uh, we have these three process. The 3T stands for trash to tank process. So uh, the beauty thing with this um, product or innovation, it produces the diesel fuel that is basically uh, you know, having the same property of the commercial diesel. And this diesel, uh, you know, based on you know, our colleagues' uh, study, uh, can be used in generators as well as uh, both engines. And why we particularly mention these you know, uh, generators, both engines, because these are the two main equipments that are used by the people. So hoping that we, if we can introduce, we can bring this technology to the local people, they can really develop this because the product from that whole process is basically usable for them. Yeah. So next please. And uh, uh, this is again just uh, you know, uh, awareness, especially for our friends out there viewing this uh, you know, seminar or webinar right now. Uh, there are many types of plastic, but unfortunately not all type of plastic can be converted to fuel. So this is a very important because again, maybe I know I have other friends who are going to present and they will say, you know what type of plastic they can uh, uh, process. So in this particular technology, we have four types of basically plastic. Number one is, we call it number two, which is the high density polyethylene or HDPE. Examples of this is like plastic containers, uh, plastic bags. And uh, these are the type of plastic that can be converted to fuel. And then the, the second type is number four, or called low density polyethylene or LDPE. Examples are like plastic bags, uh, flexible plastic containers, a plastic wrap, and uh, the third type is PP or polypropylene, and like the, uh, the plastic bottle caps, yogurt containers, and then number six is uh, polystyrene or PS. Examples are like styrofoam, uh, plastic straws, and plastic cutlery. And uh, this is again important, and because I have many, you know, probably other agencies or other researchers are trying to solve this problem, and we hope actually we complement the whole efforts in tackling the plastic. Next, please. So um, in terms of efficiency of this process based on the laboratory experiment, one kilo of plastic that we put into the system, and if we have three to five hours to process this, and in the system that has been demonstrated is basically a four kilo, and we can uh, obtain uh, one liter of you know, fuel, and the beauty thing again with this, you know, with the right process, you know, without further treatment, this fuel can actually be used in the diesel engine. 
and and uh, this is what we really want to actually bring into the island again because we aware that uh, this particular experiment is run using clean plastic as uh, so our research again try to tackle what if we use for example degraded plastic uh, what if the plastic already been like soiled or contaminated uh, what kind of process we can do to really increase i uh, you know this yield yeah so next please so now again uh, this is a perennial issue where will the rubbish come from so uh, this is again not finger pointing but again the facts um, for marble island we thought that it come from three sources local community themselves beach and reef cleans and the resorts uh, basically homestays and this is uh, we thought that if we can really package we can really educate the people there and uh, we can actually get all this you know feedstock for this process yeah next please so uh, in terms of practicality how will the system run on marble so we thought actually uh, we're gonna be called working together with the community so we really want this uh, you know technology so-called technology to run by the community themselves because we believe sustainability of the process comes or happens if the local people involve so we want to design the project so that the community involved they basically do the collection and sorting of plastics and the same the second one they do the trade system so we thought that you know if they can uh, get the plastic the people may get you no know, diesel in return and if they can operate it in more bigger scale more business oriented and therefore they can sell the business i mean they sell the diesel so this is basically a circular economy because we have this component of use recycle and make next please so uh how in our uh, collaboration with this you know four parties we again want to bring a really clean process because what uh, you know we have demonstrated we've used this biomass and you know it works uh, but we realize again to make it a more sustainable process we really want to clean our environment we don't want to have smoke therefore in this uh, project we basically bringing in this power uh, uh, you know solar powered electrical heater and uh, we we hope again we we actually have initiated this we thought of bringing this process to the island but again unfortunately because of this pandemic you know our movement is restricted and our you know uh, researchers from spain and the us were not able to uh, come to the uh, you know, island next so in terms of benefit we are very sure even though you know uh, people may aware of this but we again want to emphasize that this really a multiple benefits to the you know the people number one is again <clears throat> we believe the social people will really get this and it is a matter of change of culture and really uh, you know can um, big change the uh, social in a big way so and uh, because of this we believe that we can have a less negative uh, publicity online next please so the second one is again we we want to emphasize that this really brings a good benefit to the economic we're going to have less rubbish to be transported back to the main island we're going to have local economy of waste plastic and diesel fuel and uh, next health uh, the next benefit is health it's going to really improve the air and the water quality and cleaner uh, safer beaches and because of this you know once we really clean the island we clean we convert this and naturally we, it will attract you know more tourists uh, come over to the island and next piece and uh, the number four uh, the benefit of the whole idea is environment so we believe this technology is going to be you know bring less damage to health of reef or seagrass beds and a fewer marine life dying sea are dying as a result of uh, plastic consumption so next please so this is the motto of our beloved sabah uh, we believe this has happened but this is an ongoing because the fight is not over yet 
and therefore we are very thankful for you no know, blue hope again thank you simon monica for really trying to triangulate all parties here especially you now now the dbkk and you know the states and uh, you know this is a big giant so called enemy for us therefore we need to collaborate in order to tackle this like you know really in a complete way thank you thank you dr jidon um yeah I, the whole time i was thinking tidak paya orang pulau tidak paya orang sempurna dokter orang di bandar pun sama juga masih lagi tidak pandai kasih pisah-pisah sampah i i just have to say it because i have been practicing segregating my waste for more than five years now I segregate wet, I compost the wet ones and I echo brick the dry ones, the plastic ones. I turn them into echo bricks. But still, every time the rubbish trucks and the local councils come around, they would still emit this foul smell. And it's like urban people need to learn to segregate their waste. Okay. And it's about time that we get really aggressive with this because it's annoying. Why do I have to bear the brunt of other people's smelly? behaviors <laughs> but anyway yeah that's why i'm excited about the program um such programs that we have been having this entire day and we also have other than uh, dr jidon we also have um amazing experts um i see a friend adrian lasimbang senator and also founder of tony bung hydro energy um an amazing project that you have been uh, conducting in the rural rural parts of Sabah and Sarawak. And uh, we also have uh, Rokia Yaman from uh, Leap Micro Symbiotic University of West London. And we have Mr. Lin Kai Xuan, uh, Lax, Wood to Plastics. And also we have Zazila Roslan, who is the founder and director of Easy Plus Solutions in Ryan Berhad. So yeah, let's begin the discussion on, on um plastic innovation and how can we turn kk city or sabah a state that turns plastic into a circular economy yeah let's hear from uh senator first your, your video is ready okay ah. thank you very much so i i will not talk much because i already prepared um a video um so uh, let us watch just a short introduction and then um, uh, what we have done, and we have to, if, if there's any question, maybe after the video, I'll uh, talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Um, let us show the video, please. So then my video did not come out. <laughs> Technical problem. Yeah, hold on, show will come up. Hi, I'm Bunny. I'm one of the founding member of uh, Tony Boom, uh, a local based, Sabahan based uh, social enterprise here in Pinampang Sabah. Um, here we are at uh, Create Ponyo, or Center of Renewable Energy and Appropriate Technologies, a center that we set up a few years ago to promote and develop uh, renewable energy and appropriate technology um, resources in, in Sabah. So we have a training center here in Pinampang to provide our local youths with uh, renewable energy and appropriate te technologies um, knowledge so that they can use this for um, village development. Uh, we focus uh, on promoting renewable energy technologies such as uh, micro hydro. Here we are. Um, this is our homemade or uh, uh, produced locally at our center. Um, this is actually a, a turbine made from recycled aluminium. But apart from that, we also do uh, solar power and other um, appropriate technologies such as gas and biomass. So um, recently, we are uh, on 
a mission to find ways to uh, provide affordable electricity uh, to our rural communities in Sabah and also in, in general in Malaysia, uh, especially amongst the indigenous communities. So one of the reasons why we are doing because we are actually very committed towards the sustainable development goals of the United Nations and particularly we are looking at goal number seven which is affordable clean energy. And one of the main obstacle of providing this uh, energy or uh, affordable energy is actually the cost of the equipment. So here it, at CREATE we are trying to see uh, what are the ways that we can provide um, solutions so that we can produce these uh, turbines locally uh, at affordable price. Um, we have been experimenting with uh, recycled aluminium but recently we are also trying to do uh, components made from uh, recycled plastics such as especially the HGPE type of plastics. So I'm going to uh, show you uh, the uh, machines and also the uh, methods that we uh, use here at CREATE to produce these turbines. So at CREATE uh, we have this 3-in-1 machine uh, which um, performs the shredding uh, extrusion or injection of the uh, plastic to produce uh, turbine components that we need. For example, we are producing this uh, turbine spoon. It's a Turgo turbine spoon made from HDP plastics. So you can see there are different colors based on what type uh, of um, HDP plastics that we get collected from or donated by uh, the public to us. So this machine was made um, possible through collaboration with different NGOs such as Vichy uh, Alam Bonio and also Sea Monkey Project. So with this uh, machine, we, we have been trying on uh, experiment on different uh, techniques to produce different types of uh, components for the turbine. So our goal is to ensure that we can produce these uh, turbine components locally so that we can uh, produce it at a reasonable price and we can make the turbines affordable for our rural communities. So um, for the program, uh, I have an uh, assistant here uh, who is going to show us what are the process to uh, use this machine and produce this turbine. And later on, I'll show you what is the, the finished product and how it you know, performs uh, when we are testing this at our test race. Hi, my name is Titil, so I will show you how this thing works. So we will preheat the extruder machine until 240 degree for the top and the bottom is 270 degree. So this is the crushed plastic that will be put into the extruder hooper. After the extruder machine is preheat and reach the right temperature and then we can insert the mold for the belton Much the, the video was made um, just last night, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a bit uh, wow. rushed, but wow. anyway, they, uh, at least we have the message. I have the, to thank the youths that is helping me to do that video for me. Um, well, of course, uh, what I'm saying is that the, the last part I want to uh, talk about is the, the turbines. Actually, we have already lined up like six or seven villages that we're going to install this. Uh, supposed to be since last year, but because of COVID, we have not been able to install those. Uh, two in the Rasli communities in Peninsula. And we also have the um, 
another four in Sabah and one in Sarawak. So hopefully, the, even though it's just a small, tiny bit of uh, plastics um, that we're using, but at least we're doing something about uh, what is exactly um, uh, existing, what we can, uh, you know, land up in our shows and whatever we can collect from the households uh, that is participating in our program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. I like the video. I like the choice of song. Rindu sudah pati pati. Yeah. Uh, maybe um, our other panelists, because we're running out of time. Like I said, when we talk about the environment, we just never get enough time to do that. So maybe the other um, panelists that we have on today's stage can share something about the projects that you guys have been involved in um, in terms of um, more environmental friendly approaches. Maybe uh, Rokia. He... Yes, hello. Yeah. Rokia from University of West London. Um, I'm going to clarify that. I'm not from the University of West London. I'm from a, an organization in, in the UK called Leap Micro AD. Um, and oh, we've been I working see. together with um, Future Alan Borneo and Architrek um, in Malaysia um, on a joint project that's combining different technologies to deal with plastic waste and organic waste at the same time. So if I share my screen now, um, yep. let me just go to the presentation and um, just let me know when this is working as a slideshow. Hang on, it's just, it's just transferring over. Is that showing? Yes. Great. Okay, so I'd like to introduce this project. Um, I just mentioned we were working with a couple of other Malaysian organizations, Architrek, who have done fantastic work with um, sustainable building materials and, and eco-friendly designs, um, working with different communities in, in, in Sabah, um, and Future Alan Borneo, who specialize in environmental education um, and plastic recycling. And together, we've been putting together um, uh, sorry, I'll skip this one. We've been putting together a, a concept around uh, what if we saw waste as a, a valuable resource instead of as, as a waste, which, which it is in, in nature. There's no such thing as waste in nature. Um, so we have here, I'm going to talk you through what you can see on your screen. Um, AD at the top uh, refers to anaerobic digestion. This is one of the ways that nature breaks down um, organic waste. Composting is the other way. Um, so anaerobic digestion works with microbes that, that work without oxygen and composting and, uh, works with microbes that work with oxygen. That's, that's the main difference. Um, and <clears throat> basically, we've put together these, these ways of managing organic waste together with plastic recycling because we want to power the plastic recycling using re the renewable energy that we can, we can um, recover from, from food waste. Um, in doing that, we kind of we decarbonize the whole process. Um, even more than it would would normally be, um, and so I'm just going to talk you through one by one. So we, we've we've looked a little bit at the anaerobic digestion, but basically, um, when you break down food waste, uh, it produces in this way. It produces um, a fuel and a liquid fertilizer, uh, and when we compost the organic waste, uh, it, it turns obviously into compost. So you get different byproducts from these two processes, which are complementary. Um, the energy that we can get from food waste when we use the anaerobic digestion route um, is, is a gas and it can be used to provide heat, uh, to generate heat and also electricity. And both of these things can be used in the plastic recycling. In that um, excellent video we just saw there, you, you can see how those things could be used. Um, from the plastic recycling, working together with Architrek, we, we want to then um, turn the waste plastics into sustainable building materials. Um, and this will be the basis of, of a new kit house company. So the, the sustainable building materials we create will be put together in, in, into kits um, that can then be sold as affordable kit houses. Um, from there, we basically go, if you follow on to the left-hand side at the bottom, we've got an urban, urban farming component. Uh, and basically that's, that's um, facilitated by uh, the fertilizer uh, that comes out of the anaerobic digestion, the compost that comes from the composting process, and also the, the waste plastic that's recycled, which can also be turned into infrastructure for uh, growing food locally. So all of these kind of 
streams and byproducts come together um, to produce more value um, and um, th there is an additional value to growing food locally and that it doesn't then need to be transported anywhere it can be consumed locally um, and also it, it helps with um, the nutrient levels of the food because when you bring in food from long distances long long from far away you basically lose a lot of nutrients along the way because of the long transport distances uh, because you might have to chill it and because you have to harvest it early when it when it's when it's brought to you in that way so by growing food locally it's much much higher in nutrients much better for your health much better for your immunity um, and this is basically our kind of closed loop cycle this is our circular economy um, with the different elements that you can see there um, and the technology we're talking about here is really at the decentralized or small scale. So it's, it's human scale technology that can be used for communities rather than large industrial scale plants. Um, we, we prefer to work in this way because we believe that by engaging people at the local level, we can much better get their buy-in to this kind of a concept of, of seeing not waste, but resources. Um, and it has, we, we, we've had our own, in, in the UK here, we've had our own kind of what we call living labs, where we've had um, these various elements in place, not, not the plastic recycling, this is the exciting bit that we're going to hopefully uh, be able to integrate with our Malaysian partners, but we've had the, the other part of the, the, the process um, up and running in several sites. And at each site, it's been really kind of noticeable that people get very excited when they see energy coming from waste. Um, and they get the concept immediately. And that really helps when they go home to sort of think about things in, in a different way. You know, what are they actually throwing away? Um, and can they be doing things differently? So we found that doing things at this kind of small community scale really, really helps with that kind of level of behavior change. Um, and without tackling that at the ground level, it's gonna be very difficult to change behavior you know, across a whole state or a whole country or, or even globally. Um, so this is our kind of approach to it. Um, and in doing things in this way, we can also empower communities with the tools so that they can become more self-sufficient, more resilient, um, and we can generate, that our hope is to be able to generate green training and green employment opportunities. Um, and I'll move to the next slide. So, um, sorry, it's just got stuck a minute. There we go. So. We just to explain a few more of the benefits of, of doing things in this kind of way. And um, we've had a lot of excellent presentations, uh, and some of these uh, points may be replicating things, but I hope you bear with me. So we are thinking in terms of turning waste plastic into sustainable building products is that they have a long life, and this is a way to sequester waste plastics in a in a in a good way, not just into something that's going to be used once but something that may be um, incorporated into a building for 20, 30 or more years. Um, and also we're looking at ways of doing this uh, so that they can be recovered at the end of the life as well. Um, so I think I've spoken about the, the, the food production um, in terms of the infrastructure that we will be making with the waste plastics. It will be things like raised beds um, and also hydroponic systems. So hydroponic systems are um, uh, structures where you can grow food without using soil. So it's very lightweight. It could go on a rooftop or on a wall. Um, it uses a lot less water than normal agriculture, about 10 times less. So it's very, very resource efficient. Um, it's perfect for using the liquid fertilizer that comes out of the AD and, and all the components can be made from the waste plastic. Um, and this kind of an infrastructure can be incorporated in, into homes as well. Um, or it could be, let's say, um, installed next to restaurants so that they're growing food that they will be using literally on site. Um, it also uses the, the recovered uh, fiber um, and uh, the, the water that comes from, from the, um, the, the processes that we'll be using. Um, in terms of diverting waste and plastic um, waste plastic and organics from landfill, we're going to be significantly reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So up to two and a half tonnes of CO2 equivalent will be saved per tonne of waste diverted. That's fairly, fairly significant. Um, and then the last point I wanted to make here was that by eliminating um, food and waste miles, which is what we can do when we grow food locally and we manage waste locally, there'll be further carbon emission savings and a better air quality because of that. So just some figures. Um, this is what we've modeled. So we've been doing some circular business modeling. 
and we, we, we figure that if we're able to um, not just demonstrate this successfully in our target community in Sandakan, but if we're also then able to go on and install um, several or many of these, these types of um, waste to wealth stations, as we call them, across Sabah, um, we could be generating within about five years, we could be generating a gigawatt of clean energy. Um, producing a substantial revenue um, over that time to keep the whole thing going and then producing a profit with, which can then go back into improving um, and optimizing the systems. Um, and in the process, we're going to be creating the sustainable building materials, uh, the low carbon fertilizer and compost, and the locally produced food. Um, if you'd like to find out more or get in touch or find out how you can work with us, um, and I'd certainly like to work with some of the people I've seen on the uh, presentations earlier, um, please, please just um, email us and we'd be really happy to talk to you. Um, thanks very much for listening. And it's been, um, it's been a real honor to be um, included in this event. So thank you very much, Simon, for including me. Thank you, Rokia. You reminded me of my alter ego who also okay. speaks like that whenever she's in character. Kotor sepusapu dulu, keep that. But yeah, we're, um, again, we're running out of time and I would just like to make a correction. Um, Mr. Lin Kai Xuan um, is actually from Inspira Biosolutions from Taiwan, um, another country that we can model a lot about the things and how we approach the way our city is being run. So Mr. Lin, Okay. Yeah, just hear from him quickly just once before you. we go to Zazila. Okay, yeah. I will do a, a very quick one. Um, thank you very much for inviting uh, me to participate in this program. Um, you are half wrong um, or, or half correct. Um, I'm Inspira from Taiwan, and uh, our project company is Lux Global Resource uh, in Malaysia. Um, Inspira uh, Applied Bioscience um, uh, from Taiwan. This Develop an integrated uh, circular economy model. This is actually uh, was inspired and developed uh, by our early work and continuous support from Sabah Forestry Department. So I'm in my heart, I'm Sabahan. Um, and uh, the model uh, took shape uh, with the support of Taiwanese government who want who wish to take concrete action. Um, as a responsible global citizen by taking uh, national, uh, you know, asking the uh, National Research Institute to develop a uh, practical and scalable bioconversion technology. And uh, the model was further uh, mature with the support of New Zealand uh, government to uh, adjust and the approach and assist in making this model a reality. So, um, with, uh, uh, we are very fortunate through LUX that uh, we are able to, uh, hopefully the project will take off in Sabah to develop a, a circular economy model. And uh, uh, from here, I would like to share with you um, uh, this, uh, our concept. So quickly uh, go through the slide. Uh, can you see the slide now? Yes. Okay. So Inspira is, um, you know, our concept is to build from nature a sustainable future. And uh, what we do is to simplify uh, value maximization. And what we talk about the value maximization, the value is not only financial value, but also uh, maximize the, ad, the value from the intangible and intangible assets, including natural. Um, and how we do that? We do the value ma maximization through integration of practical technology. So we are not going to use any space age technology. We use uh, practical technology. Um, the technical technology from forestry, woodworking, and last part, we integrate the chemical industry into this whole picture to produce the biochemical from, uh, from, from nature. So um, this concept strive because as a industrial revolution, uh, our you know, knowledge explosion and also improved living standard have increased the population, human population exponentially. So the growth and expansion have taken a toll to, um, to our planet. And this, uh, 
wonderful improvement in life is uh, based on fossil uh, way of life. So this fossil way of life have altered relationship of human to each other, nature, and our planet. And while we advance and prosper, everybody have, I'm sure everybody feel that, especially with the flood, the, the, the more frequent flood, the, all, the, the severe weather, our only planet is altered by this way. So we have enough knowledge, existing knowledge to do something. And uh, we see some of our panelists is already doing something like the Saba uh, UMS, okay? And the Rockyas program, this is amazing. So let's pause and think, you know, knowledge from the past as a foundation uh, for uh, event, uh, sustainable future. So back to the drawing board and we think about how to crystallize the knowledge and technology to repair and rebuild and grow. We cannot stop human population from growing. So we have to find a way to find that balance. Okay. So conserving forests sustainably and also forest is our uh, life and soul. So you see uh, one of our partner uh, company, America or um, Forest Solution in Sabah uh, and, and, and in their collaboration in, uh, with the Sabah Forestry, you can see in 2019, uh, uh, one part of the forest looks like this with their knowledge, determination, and professionalism. See the forest in 2020 is already looking like that. So forest is really a, a wonderful tool. Forestry as a tool for a foundation as a sustainable bioeconomy. However, the way we use our current system uh, can be improved. And environmental, environmental impact of using these resources and the residuals is currently a burden to community, government, and environment. So, but um, as everyone here mentioned before, residual can be a valuable resource for the future growth. And that has a social equality impact as well. Uh, the current system uh, do the logging, export, or uh, simple uh, processing that has uh, minimal pro local processing. Um, and, and in 2019, in 2020, uh, import of, uh, of products, uh, timber products from China, in this example from China, this is a local news, uh, is up 90, more than 90%. That's a, you know, we used to be net exporter from Sabah. Now we are net importer. And that's something is wrong with our old system. So the current way is very complicated and dynamic. So manufacturing in Malaysia is facing growing uh, complexity and challenges. All these issues bundle up together. So is improvement possible? It is definitely yes. We just have to all work together. Okay. So our approach is to, is to integrate biotechnology as a way of automation. We think about you know, mechanical automations. Is that actually there is a way to improve our efficiency and competitive, uh, com competitiveness through biotechnology. So by turning these biomass residuals to bioplastic. These are very high volume material. And currently uh, the world is in severe shortage because all these uh, uh, bioplastic, biodegradable plastics are from starch, which is food. So we have, we have sufficient, this, we use the resource that we have in Malaysia, in Sabah sustainably by growing a lot of trees and Sabah forestry is doing making their best effort to do that. And with the collaboration uh, with TAS and all the associations in the, in the industry, Malaysia really has a chance, uh, you know, working together with Taiwan and uh, New Zealand, and has a chance to lead the world in making this change. 
So with this new piece of puzzle in place, the biotechnology, manufacturing in Malaysia can be very competitive. And not only by pressing the volume down, we can actually pay very high uh, wages to local people. So forests, we can see light of the future from the, our forests. And we can relook wood as a versatile, beautiful and sustainable feedstock. From you know, the simple use, we don't need to invent you know, high-tech wood, just the simple use. You know, with in, just innovation, uh, we have a lot of innovations in Malaysia. Combined together, mm -hmm. We can satisfy the daily convenience we expect from timber and also continue to explore its beauty to integrate technology and then we can make this home building sustainable. But while doing so, we can create jobs to help support the family and transform our, our economy from export or resource, even the low um, minimum process is a form of exporting resource to job and high value process and make everybody, everyone in Sabah capable of finding that dream home ourselves, standing on our own. So we can start, it's time to act and we must act now. And with the partnership and collaboration, it's really not only financially feasible, it is scalable. Um, our project with uh, Yasan Saba, it can really create thousands of jobs, create new townships. And the export of Malaysia is not only low at low tech, and we don't need to rely on foreign workers. It can be very, very prof profitable. So I, have to, I would like to thank all our partners who support us from Taiwan, Malaysia, New Zealand, Singapore, um, Germany, South Africa, United States, Canada, China, and UK, Australia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lin, for that presentation and hearing from everybody. I it's, it's just giving us this inspiring outlook into the future. Um, yeah, we have the capacity in Malaysia, and in Sabah particularly, uh, you have yeah. a lot of things uh, like uh, uh, in Sabah Forest Research Center in the mm -hmm. headquarters. We have Simon here, he's becoming a Sabahan. And we have a, a wonderful company like Forest Solutions. They, the mm -hmm. expertise are here in Sabah, they're hard in Sabah. And uh, with your help and the MCO over, I'll be back. <laughs> Yeah, Thank all you. of us, uh, the people, the partners in the room is officially on board. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, yeah. So, uh, uh, Amy, we're running, down, running out of time. So let's hear from Zazila for a quickie one, three minutes, and then we let uh, our um, ex, uh, National Geographic Explorer ex, expert, uh, Paul Rose, to close the session. Over to you, Zazila. Thank you, Monica. So hi, everyone. So I want to make this a quick one. So I am Zazila. I'm a social entrepreneur. And I am who founded Easy Plus Solutions in Denver. So what we do is we turning plastic waste into plastic wood. I'm not an expert in uh, plastic uh, or technology, but this is what I feel responsible to as, uh, you know, Sabahan. You want to combat plastic, and I don't have the expert, but I managed to do something within my capability. So I'm going to share a screen about uh, this uh, community project that I've been doing. Uh, okay. What is it? Sorry. Okay, so I cannot make it like it's a PDF file, so yeah, I'm just gonna make a quick one right here. 
So our initiative, because we we have um, we have a lot to do with the community. So we are working with the community. So what we are finding is it's hard to make um, people habit change in the especially in the lower household income. So if we are doing campaigns and no plastic and all that and we cannot reach the target because we, they simply didn't understand and simply didn't care and all of that. But what we do here in this community is we initiate to create young leaders with zero waste housing. So our objective is to create circular economy within the community, to create awareness to recycle waste among the B4C community, to empower income among the young and privileged youth, such as, as schoolers, we call it schoolers because they don't go to school, and stateless, and ultimately to minimize waste that goes into the landfill. So this is our uh, organization. So we turn the plastic waste into plastic foods as, a, as an alternative for food. Because I feel bad I'm in the furniture business. I feel bad when I'm using wood. I feel like I'm, I'm contributing to deforestation. <laughs> so this is what we do to our, our beloved land. So, um, okay, I'm gonna skip this because we are going to buy plastic 30 cents per kilo uh, to, you know, to, to trigger, to trigger the low income household uh, habit. So when we say when we say waste, I hope one day we can say it's like a uh, iron because we buy iron. There is a people who collect iron, right? So it's not pos it's not impossible that one day we collect plastic and people will see it as like iron. So this is our our what we do. So we a point with young leader in the community, especially here in PPR, uh, low, low house income, you know, low house income people. So we duplicate this young army, we educate them about the environment and we setting up the collecting service door to door. Uh, and then we empower them to segregate the waste from the household. So this, uh, this is part of, uh, this is my young leader. She, he is, he is just 12 years old, but he managed to uh, segregate and do a zero waste type of, you know, household. So this is our uh, settler children who make, uh, they are trying to process the plastic wood. So this is, our final product, uh, this is not polished because we don't have greater machine. We don't have like, uh, you know, experts coming our way to teach us, but this is our final product, which is, we call it stool. So this stool are made by two housewives who need an oven to make it by ourselves. Uh, this, so this is our community project with the Rainbow Settlers Children. Uh, so this is uh, the machine in Crete, in um, Senator Adrian place. So I'm very fortunate because there is a place like here in Sabah that we can try our, you know, innovate something. So this is what we do and then this is, uh, we. Some, we collect plastic within our capacity. And then this is our plastic wood uh, that's made from scratch. Even we shred the plastic, we don't have shredder. We only have, uh, we only have knife. So um, I'm, I'm very grateful that now we have Sabah Create, which is founded by uh, Senator Adrian so that we can fabricate an affordable machine that can be used in the community, that can be used to trigger uh, Sabahan people to recycle and make money from waste. 
Okay, that's all I think. Thank you because we are running out of time. Thank you. Amazing work, Zazila. Keep it on. Keep it on. Nanti aku interview kau di radio. All right. So we're really past the. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we're really way past the uh, time that we're supposed to end this session. So and we're not gonna leave this room, this space here, without letting a National Geographic uh, British TV presenter leave the space without uh, hearing him say something. So Paul, Ms. Paul Rose, it's an honor to have you, to share this space with you. Can you say a word or two to, um, to officially close our session? Yeah, thanks very much. Well, it's great to be here. Great to be part of, you know, Commonwealth Day, International Women's Day, and the whole Blue Hope initiative. Um, particularly excited as it's, it's a part of the world that I don't know. Um, I spent my whole life leading science expeditions, mostly in the Antarctic, in the Arctic, and in the deep sea. So you would think that naturally I'd been to the cold triangle. Well, it seems that everybody I know has, and everybody I'm joined with today has, but, but you're talking to a man who's never been there, but gonna fix that very soon. Um, in all of my expeditions everywhere, I bumped into plastic, whether it's water samples, um, or beautiful Arctic beaches that I know as pristine, but because of climate change and, it, and the loss of the ice, the barrier that used to be there for plastic now doesn't exist. And on those beautiful beaches, there's now tons of plastic. I'm also the expedition leader for National Geographic Pristine Seas. We looked at all of the stresses that are on the ocean and realized that one method that would be action would be why not find, explore and help protect the last pristine places in the ocean. So we've had 31 expeditions, created 23 marine protected areas, which total over 6 million square kilometers fully protected. And we're well on our way, as you know, and you are, and the whole world is now on this high ambition coalition to protect 30% of the planet by 2030. And that's part of our bigger mission. I'm also the ambassador for the United Nations Basel Rotterdam Stockholm conventions with a particular focus on plastic. So you can imagine all those activities overlap beautifully for my support for Save the Plastic Neutral. So having never been there, but on my way, I uh, just would like to, you know, certainly applaud all the work you're doing. And I'm very happy to be uh, in support. Thanks very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. And well, yeah, it's been an inspiring evening. Um, you want to say something, Simon? Um, just a big thank to everyone, 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 our champions here, everyone in each of them, everyone in their own way. Um, you know, Zazila, what an amazing project, you know, um, you know, and uh, Adrian, you know, you, you, you kind of the community, uh, Panampang, it's, it's, it's amazing. Dr. Jidon, really looking forward to getting it going, you know, and what you've done already with your partners. Um, it's amazing. Sabah's doing it already. You know, there we are coming up with this new term, Sabah Plus and Neutral. We're halfway there already. So, so, so uh, it's incredibly exciting. And obviously, the high-end plans from, um, from Kai uh, Inspira is incredibly exciting. That's a sort of uh, a something, the vision for Sabah four or five years down the line when we're, when we're there. That, that finale, that flag mark in the sand saying Sabah's becoming plastic neutral, I think. It's exciting times. Um, it, we need it. The world needs it. Saba needs it. Saba has the opportunity. This is our opportunity. It's about Sabahans leading the way in UNESCO Ocean Decade. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very special day. Looking forward to uh, making it happen with you all. Thank you so much for your help yeah. and uh, your contribution. And uh, uh, let's go. Let's, uh, let's get it going. Roll up our sleeves and continue what we're all doing, but do it properly, officially. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Johnny. Thank you, Simon. Thank, thank you. Everyone. We keep in touch. Thank you, Bye. Thank you for all the audience as well. Thank Bye. You. Thank 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 you.